Welcome back, everybody. This is another episode, probably the final episode or close, of Definitely Not Developer Commentary. My name is Mike Stout. I am Tony Garcia. And uh, I love what we're watching right now. I love watching him walking in place and sliding. Uh, <laughs> we, we had to spend so much energy trying to keep that from happening. So, so it's good to see it. A small thing, and uh, so without getting to too deep into details, stuff I don't care about. Uh, I don't work in games too much. I, I, I'm not working in games at the moment, or at least not directly in games at the moment. Um, games adjacency? I at games adjacent stuff. Uh, and I tend to work with people who don't work in games at all, which is, uh, mm -hmm. which is really interesting uh, an experience. And uh, I find myself a lot of terms that, I, uh, that are second nature to me make no sense to them. And I, I, I actually have used the term scoobying before. And they're like, what, what are you talking about? And they're like, what does that even mean? I was like, you know, like in Scooby-Doo, where they... And, they run in the where in the, and they're like, oh, that's weird, but okay. I'm like, no, but it's, it's descriptive. Everybody knows where that thing in Scooby-Doo, yeah. where they're running in place. You know, I think Insomniac may have been the only place to call it scoobying. I mean, it's a great term yeah. for it. It's, I see, I, I understood it immediately yeah. when I saw it, but... All right, Quantum, what you got? Am I ready? Remember, uh, okay, this is just a side aside. Remember when we decided to do something like this on Deadlocked, and we just were like not sure at all that we should lock you into the last level, mm -hmm. and, and now it's just like it's a thing. I've seen this in a bunch of Ratchet games now, and that's probably a good way to go. Yeah. But I just it's funny because we we were so, uh, uh, what's the word? In, we were we were. Uh, we were questioning at the time, like, is this something players will understand? Mm -hmm. and, uh, no, it's totally, totally easy to understand. Okay, okay, we have to draw him out. So I was thinking I'd disguise myself <laughs> as a robot, but with a really big... Do you know what that sound is? Listen closely. Is it fear? Hope? The slow... Inevitability of death. No, it's me. <laughs> Winning. What else is new, you say? Oh, quite right. But you are only a part of one dimension. What about the rest? Maybe I'm just old-fashioned, but I think everyone deserves a little subjugation. So... To celebrate such a momentous occasion, I'd like to honor the good doctor <laughs> who inspired this journey in the first place. By invading his home dimension personally. What? My first stop, <laughs> Megalopolis. Or, as I like to think of it, New Nefarious City. <laughs> <laughs> when do we leave? Right now. Open-air pirate spaceships. Poorly designed. <laughs> well, I mean, if you're a, a, if you're robot, a robot pirate, it's though, fine, but it's... they're not all robots. Are they not? Are some of them organics? I mean, Ratchet isn't a robot. Quantum oh, isn't I, a robot. I see. But Ratchet also has... Ratchet can go out in space, yeah. no problem. But yeah, Quantum's not a robot. I always Nobody ever asks what Captain Quark is. I think he's a human, and he just shoves his fingers into those three-fingered gloves so, oh, that he, be, yeah. so that he looks normal, right? Because nobody else in the universe has uh, uh, five fingers. Wait, does Ratchet have five fingers? Yes, he does. Okay. That's why he has the But everybody hands. else has three, right? Yeah. All right. But Ratchet's hands have to be gigantic to accommodate all those fingers. They're a lot, they're a lot smaller now than they used to be, which is nice because uh, they were kind of ridiculous before. Hurry, 
We're teaming up now. That doesn't seem so useful. Which one's the sniper rifle? Uh, top left, yeah. didn't slow down. Did I have to do something to make so it slow down? So, early on, it doesn't slow down much. You have to buy upgrades for oh, it to really okay. slow down. Because it's it's a very light slowdown at the beginning. So, it becomes useful as you upgrade it. At the start, it's not super, super great. You definitely have to put the time into that one. Also, I don't remember us ever having three weapon wheel pages before. Yeah, there's a, yeah they, they fill up the weapon wheel for sure. On the subject of... Uh, how you know some weapons are great and some weapons aren't i remember reading uh an article by someone who worked on magic the gathering about why why you need bad cards mm -hmm. in a set and it makes me think of that like uh sure maybe the balance was off but you do need to have some weapons that aren't great in the in the lineup i i so i've read that article i kind of get where you're coming from I'm not sure I buy it in the context of Ratchet and Clank, just because in a Magic the Gathering set, there's a lot of cards. Like, each set, yeah. I don't know how to count it, but there's got to be, like, at least 50, 60 new cards in a given set. Oh, those um, are enemies anymore. But there's not quite as many weapons in the Ratchet game. I kind of get where you're coming from. They can all be... They can all be the Negatron they can't. They can't all be the best weapon. Right. And maybe what the... You know, maybe what the the lowest level is isn't. You know, it's probably too. The worst weapon is probably too much worse. Right. Uh, but yeah, you. That's you know, no yeah, matter what, you're going to have the, some yeah, weapons that are bad. I, I, there was a there was a um, the the catchphrase I think Roberto used to use way back in the day was it would be like if every day was your birthday. Yeah. yeah. It would get boring very quickly. And you can't have every day be your birthday. That's absolutely true. And then there's also the, the just the fact that you, you you only know if something's good based on the things that aren't. Right. Uh, like the uh, you can't. Uh, it's just that you need something to compare it to, right? Like when we were when we were in that level uh, with uh, the the giant monster uh, that was chasing us, uh, and then we had that moment where like three bosses came out, and then the monster just ate the bosses, mm -hmm. and it was such a feeling like you could tell now the monster was powerful only in comparison to those those things i think it's similarly with usefulness that is hilarious but yeah i mean you're always going to have like weapons like the like the first blaster and like the and the um, and the first bomb glove they're kind of just you know utilitarian weapons you use them they're not particularly flashy not particularly great but they still have their use and i think that's sort of the, like the worst weapon still has to have a, a good yeah. use case. Um, and I, I think that might be what you're reacting to, right? Is, is that right. the, even like the, there just wasn't enough of a breadth of usefulness given the number of weapons. Right. And I think in the Magic the Gathering case, like it's specifically like they were talking about there's some cards that they, they don't ever really expect you to put into a deck. Uh -huh. um, yeah, I, I don't think that's yeah. necessarily what we're talking about here, but... Oh, wow. Yeah, I love that robot. The nefarious robot. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> uh, this is cool, right? This is awesome. <laughs> this is really cool. <laughs> I thought, at least he's far away. It's a great trick, right? To keep, yeah. to get the sense of scale of the robot. Because it's far away. Yeah. And you can also see it up close, right? So you can still see the whole thing. Yeah, that's, that's it's brilliant. Cool. It's clear. It's because, really clever, right? Because it's really hard to make a giant robot boss that you can fight unless if, you know, you're doing like Shadow of the Colossus. Right, right? you'll see like its head, right? If yeah. he was up here, you would be basically fighting his head and you wouldn't see the coolness of that robot, Yeah. right? Yeah, Even if it withdrew at different points, like it's just neat that I can see it towering over the city back there. Man, so much pink. 
<laughs> yeah, we didn't never get to use the pink, did we? I oh, mean, shit. I tried, but I always got pushback. It's glad that whatever uh, whatever uh, block they had on pink has, has well and truly expired <laughs> in this game. I was proud of myself that I was able to get it in for that Court and Gears fight so much, that level. I do. I also like the the character design there in terms of like, oh, I need to hit it in that glowy pad. Obviously, mm -hmm. like it's uh, coming up with something that has a vulnerability point that instantly makes sense to the player is not. It's not as straightforward as it sounds. I like that he has those spiky wing things. That's a cool little character design element. Pierre! This is cool, them bringing in all the characters that we we worked with over the course of the adventure and for that final challenge. Yeah. I mean, they all have to fall away one by one, right? So that at the end, it's just me versus the bad guy. But. That was a good one. have to raise the stakes like at the end i feel like bringing it back to the home dimension does a pretty good job of raising the stakes man look at that that's so Great. sweet it's so big it's so big and so well animated that like the, the way his jaw bounces when he laughs yeah yeah man these are some talented animators i have to say yeah absolutely top notch And then, like, it's, it's the little detail. Like, when he laughs, you see, like, the rings inside his mouth that light up. And, like, just the attention to detail on all the little stuff is so good. Yeah. And for, when it's something that big, you can't skimp on the detail. Yeah. Uh, and, yeah, just top-notch, this thing. The uh, people helping me are getting in my way a lot. right down the bellet. Uh I don't know where the weak point is, but I mean, I think as long as you're hitting it, you're you're good. I need some more ammo. This is becoming considerably less amusing. This dimension is defended. Ooh. Ooh. 
should have uh, done the dodging. Move. Gotta love the deep literature cuts. If there's one thing Ratchet and Clank is, is known for, it's their appeal to high literature. Yeah. Oops. Am I doing damage to him when I don't hit him in the mouth? I can't tell. Yeah. Uh, And because they can load in a different head every time, yeah. like they can keep getting more and more damaged. Oof, that was cheap. I do admire that the pirates are still trying to sing shanties while they're in the middle of a fight. That's dedication to a joke. Gotta finish it up with the head. Nope. Got some Drek vibes going on here. Yeah. So that they can actually make the world explode around you. Oh, that's clever. Yeah, it's cool, right? Yeah. I like that. Okay. I just wanted some ammo before I destroy his heart. <laughs> it's also because of the interference. This isn't a ring attack, but I'm gonna I'm gonna call it a ring attack. <laughs> Take that, Emperor Nefarious. Me? 
<laughs> I will bring in all of my armies, all of my followers. You will bow before me. He's going to destroy the dimensions. Are these like all his armies from all the dimensions? Uh, well, he only controls the one dimension. Okay. But I think it's everybody. Who could it be? Yes. You were right. I cannot run away anymore. I yes. Do this alone. And hop on. No, it's good to see Kit. Okay. Time for some good old fashioned final boss. Ah, nefarious style. So how how do you Oh look he's got the beam. He's, got the beam. he's doing the things. He's doing the things, yeah, Tony. He does take he does he does take a couple of the attacks. It is a mostly different fight, but they they did take some inspiration from uh, from Nefarious's old move set, which is surreal to me. That well, so one of the things that it's kind of weird and it's very surreal, and uh, I wouldn't quite qualify it as imposter syndrome, but it, it's 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 surreal to look back at these things that we did when we were kids uh -huh. become canon in a franchise. Because <laughs> yeah. I didn't know what I was doing back then. Like, a lot of the stuff I did was just like, oh, this just seems cool, it would be fun. Like, just stupid ideas that I had. And it turns into like, oh yeah, this is now part of it. This is, you know, going forward, this is something that we're going to keep. And the fact that anything that I did back then would be something that was chosen to keep seems uh, unfathomable to me. You did make the very first Dr. Nefarious boss fight. I mean, everything after that is going to have to keep that in mind. <sighs> yeah, but it's weird. It's yeah. weird that that was yeah, the it case is weird. because I wasn't thinking long term when I was coming up with that. Stuff. No. I was coming up with the best things I could do at that time. For the amount the of time, time you had. Yeah. No, there was no thought of like, oh, 20 years from now, <laughs> somebody's going to look back on this and be like, okay, which one of the, which stuff of this do we want to keep? Which stuff of this doesn't work? You know, it, that was never in the, uh, <clears throat> in the thought process. And it's weird to look back on it now and be like, oh yeah, yeah. some of the stuff is, is hanging around, which I would never have expected to be the case when I was doing that for the, when, back in the day. Yeah. It is, it is a uh, novel. And I, I imagine it's like this for everybody who gets, the good fortune of working on something that people care about, but like, uh, oh man, he's taking my hand. Um, just the idea that that you know, I've 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 worked on something that people say is a classic, right? And I I know I know when I say classic what I mean, uh, and that usually doesn't mean anything I worked on, right? Because it's it's all stuff I played when I was a kid or that I love. Uh, so it's. It's been really neat these last 20 years to sort of see that, right? Where Ratchet has, has endured, and it's been very good to me. I've, pretty much every job I've ever gotten, I've gotten because of Ratchet. Uh, and so, yeah, I guess all I'm saying is I, I agree with you. I totally get the imposter thing because, like, you know, people make classics, and then it's not me, you know? Except that we apparently did. Uh, and that's that's kind of neat. Well, it kind of it, it, it just gives me a different perspective on things in general. Where you know, on these things that I love, it's entirely possible that this one thing that I love in this thing that I think is amazing, it's entirely possible it was just some somebody like dicking around and we're like, oh, wouldn't it be kind of cool if we did this? And it turns into a thing, right? Yeah. Like, how many ideas in these? How many things that we love? were started off by just some random person being like, you know what might be fun? Let's try this. And then it yeah. turns into a thing. 
Um, Probably most that's, things that we And that's uh, comforting in a way, right? That so many of these things were made by people who at the time had no idea what they were doing. Or best case scenario, had a hope and a dream that would, it would turn into something. That right? 20 years from now, people would still be playing a Ratchet and Clank game. Yeah. was not something we took for granted. Yeah. So yeah, it's 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 cool and it's interesting and uh, it's awesome to see people come in and do Nefarious and do him way better, way better than anything that I could have done. But you still see little flashes of things carrying over. It's very humbling, uh, and, I will say. And to know that there are people working you on wanna, this. She's got her hand out for you. Okay. To know that there are people working on this who are fans of the original games too. Yeah. Like that grew up playing the games. Like it's it's a generational affair, and that's. Yeah, that's right. Do we now have to fight Doctor Nefarious? <laughs> what do you know about winning? Good job, Nefarious. Is he a good guy now? I don't know, it's confusing. Probably not. Did he just get squished? <laughs> what an idiot. Ready to fix this, pal? I would love nothing more. All right, because he's been training on this with all the puzzles. I was hoping to have a moment where like all of the rivets and all of the ratchets from all of the dimensions showed up to help. <laughs> hey, I'm sorry for what I said before. You're my friend and Thank you for coming back. Team? Team. I guess it's time to go home, huh? <laughs> yeah. Ratchet and Clank had their acrimonious start. That's... But I mean, Clank didn't tear Ratchet's arm off. No. It's a little bit different. <laughs> Just a little. I think you know. But she looks so cool now. It's true. And if she'd had a normal arm, she couldn't have held off the fixer. So in the long run, I think Kit did her a favor. <laughs> those little fireworks looked like those ice cream cones in the safe of Sonic the yeah. Hedgehog. Well, cool. I loved that game. Like, uh, you know, like there were some things, like you said, that could be uh, uh, different or better. But, like, I really, really liked it. Yeah, game. they did a really good job. Yeah. I mean, thumbs up all around, for sure. But especially for all of these illustrations here. Definitely any criticisms are minor criticisms. But, uh, yeah, great job all around. They got a full-on credit sequence. Aww. Right, because Lawrence was on paternity leave. Right.
Oh, and they're putting um, titles. They're still going alphabetically, but uh, mm. putting titles. That's awesome. Dave Girton. Al Hastings, Brian Hastings. I know some of these people. Are there any parting thoughts you want to leave them with? Uh, like what? What? What's next for us? Maybe. Uh, I don't know. I will. I'm not going to promise anything. I'm not a. I'm not a <laughs> fool. Uh, yeah, I don't know if I have anything. Anything else to add? I think I got most of my feelings out of the way. Um, but yeah, just general. Uh, really enjoyed this game. Really enjoyed doing this recording with you, Mike. Uh, it's been good to it's fun. been good to be doing this again. Yeah, it's yeah. been really good. Uh, I definitely hope people have uh, gotten something out of this. I hope people have enjoyed it. Um, I'm glad. Thank you, for everybody, for all the nice comments, questions, uh, polite criticisms. Have all been great. Uh, definitely thankful for everybody who stuck it out with us, despite all the. Uh, delays and weird sort of things it's been a it's been a weird process to get this all in but uh i'm glad we got it all done and i'm and glad it, that there are still people who are sticking it out with us and uh willing to give us uh, a chance to play through these games and sort of uh experience it with you guys even after a 10-year gap yeah. <laughs> oh there's schneider man i i know so many of these people who are still there i saw billy and uh dwight and paul and a few other people well, we were James, Mark. I saw Duncan also. I like that they're doing it alphabetical. That's really cool. So, do you have any parting thoughts? I don't really like I uh, if I had played this all through in one sitting, I might have more uh, for you. But like uh, I don't uh, uh, since I didn't get it all as one bit, I don't know how to dissect it all down. Uh, but I feel like it was a good like um, return to form. Uh, there was a lot that I really liked about how they did it. Uh, there's a lot of different ways to make a ratchet game. Uh, this one is one of my favorite ways, you know, like they have a really cool, interesting gimmick to it. Got uh, a stable of mostly good weapons. Uh, the, that upgrade, the, the rare tanium upgrade system, I'll, I'll never stop saying how much I love that. It's so perfect for this game and I'm glad they brought it back. Uh, and uh, I, I liked seeing all my favorite characters. I like that they seem to have taken my idea about the plumber being a supreme being who lives above all of the dimensions and exists only to you know, clear their plumbing out. Uh, that's, that was important to me. And they got my memos, all of the notes that I sent. Uh, but no, it... Uh, these are delightful, these little... Illustration. Yeah, really nice. But yeah, so I, I love it. I'm still having fun watching these, so. Kidding me? <laughs> if I ever I think I just dropped. My never ending story of success is a lonely refrain. So I've one request. 
Join me at the top. Why don't you join me where the stars all shine? And join me at the top. Why won't you join me? Let our powers combine. You know I can't resist a ditty. So join me. Oh, wait, well, what a pity. Looks like I forgot. They can come up. I'm everything you're not. Nope. Ha! Ah, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. I said that's pretty good. Oh, it's wonderful. Look at me and my flawless schemes. The kind you could never dream up in your dreamiest of dreams. Aren't you so lucky to have me to revere your flawless yet lawless emperor right here? Join me at the top. Why don't you join me where the stars all shine and I will never flop. No, I won't. Just join me. Go on, fall in line. And no one's given me good reason to stop my usual power season. Join me at this spot. Oh, for God, I'm everything you're not. Who am I? Our greatness. And who are you? Wait, wait, I'm not going to say this. You're no good without me. What? How dare you ever doubt me? What? Now listen as the doctor sings the case. They join you at the top. Yes, they would. <laughs> join you where the stars all shine. And boy, I'm so freaking hot. You're scalding. I should have them up. But you will not. It's all kinds of rad. And hilarious. To be all big and bad. And nefarious. To join me on my plot. Never mind. Forgot! I'm everything you're not! Nefarious on top! Do we uh, know whether the two Nefarii had the same voice actor or not? I believe they don't, but I okay. wasn't paying attention. It's kind of funny. Uh, uh, so I worked on, on Crash, and we had a character named Dr. Nefarious Tropy, who came from Crash 3, who went into another dimension and pulled out another version of himself to work with. And then we had Dr. Nefarious going into another dimension and pulling out a version of himself to work with. Uh, it's a neat little parallel there. Yeah. I think you can skip the rest of these and then, yeah. I'm going to like to go back. Oh, let's go to the thing. Okay. Well, thank you, everybody, for, for joining us on this ride. Pretty sure this is the last episode for ratchet and clank rift apart definitely not developer commentary uh, i'm gonna miss you all but uh signing out my name is mike i'm tony and it's been great to have you yeah thank you very much that was cool i like that <laughs>